uh, into meditation. So I was like, oh, and I had a bit of time to kill, so I thought I'll have a chat. Right. Have you got time? Oh, we've never got time, we're too busy. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were too busy. But well, I said, yeah. what, what's all that then? What do, what's all, what do you do? And he said, we'd teach you how to breathe. <laughs> it's like, well, I'm 30. I think that's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've done all right. And he sort of said, I'll oh, forget it. I'll <laughs> <laughs> oh, forget it. <laughs> I'm 30. And in, in, in Selfridges, they do, um, uh, like, Evian or whatever, that water company are there. And, and they've got, like, little glasses of water. <laughs> and you walk past and go, have you ever tried this? <laughs> <laughs> it's water. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here you go. We'll try it. You go, Jesus Christ. Is that what water is? <laughs> what have I been drinking, then? You've been drinking piss and mud. <laughs> have I? I'll have a bottle. <laughs> anyway, listen. Rockbusters. Oh, come on, then. Let's get it done. Um... Really? Yeah. Come on, then. Right, so cryptic clues and initials, you work it out, it's a band and stuff. Yeah. Right, Brilliant. first one. Bob Holness. Uh, the first clue, <laughs> um, the doctor said part of the foot and the leg was no good, so he took him off and he threw him away. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's the clue, the initials okay. T-B. T-B. Okay. Right, the doctor said part of the foot and the leg was no good, so he took him off and threw them away. Second one, the Scottish monster has got a, a, a bit of a tan. Right, the Scottish monster has got a bit of a tan. Okay. That's, uh, that's T-D, right? <laughs> and, uh, the last one, uh, well, the, uh, the 60s singer had a heart attack whilst he was having it away. We won't be seeing him again. <laughs> right, and that's F-N-M. F-N-M. <laughs> well, the 60s singer's had a heart attack. He was having it away. We won't be seeing him again. Email in. Ricky Dot Gervais. Remember, this is to save Rockbusters. If people don't get this, right... It's no more, so you better, if you want this feature to stay, you better get the clues. Right. Good work, Carl. Uh, we'll give those clues again after uh, the next tune. What are we playing? And this is, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you love it, don't love you? It, you love it. it. Good, it's a good, good stomping pop number one rock. XFM. Jane's Addiction, just because. I think things are, are rocking up. They are indeed. <laughs> rocking yeah. up in the land this year, Steve. Yes, that's good news, I think. Evanescence, then, The Darkness, Rock-tastic. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkerton of a Saturday. Can I just say that the Shaving Your Arse feature <laughs> yeah. from earlier, uh, if you missed that, that was half past one. That was a discussion on shaving your arse. Yeah. Uh, it was great stuff. That seems to have caught the public imagination. Yes. We've had so many emails. We've had someone telling us exactly how to shave your arse. Yeah. So if you need that information, I can probably forward it to you. Well, I think this will be the year of rock and arse. <laughs> exactly. But uh, it's extraordinary how, you know, just a simple discussion like that that mm. you would think perhaps was crass, crude. And mind you, our, our listeners do like Carl talking about monkeys. Sure. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's not like it's, it, it's something to be proud of. Mm. It's not like we changed a nation or, or freed a, a people or oh, found no. a cure for something. We, we hit them in their, you know, at their level sure. with monkeys and asses. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's what our listeners love. Yeah. <laughs> monkeys and asses. Yeah. We should put that on the poster. I and they go together, because I, um, I joined the zoo, uh, uh, last time we went down and became friends of the zoo, right? Oh, right. I thought mate, you had to sit in a, <laughs> no, in a no, cage no, for no. a... And, uh, it, th that thing happened. We were, I, I went straight for the chimps. Of course. Right? And there was sort of like three sort of, uh, big sort of adult ones there, and, um, there's people with their kids, and I could see the people just putting their kids away as one of them went up and started putting his face up the other one's Oh, Sure. And it was sort of like, I just can't be able to explain this to yeah. my children. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I was people just moving away, oh, come on then, there's the lions, let's <laughs> go and have a look at the lions. Yeah. What are they doing? They're just sniffing each other's asses. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I remember when I used to go to the zoo, there, I always felt there were certain animals that weren't getting a look in, really, that no one was particularly interested in. The tapir. That's, exactly. We were going straight to the snakes we were interested in. Yeah. Birds. So I don't remember being big, particularly interested in birds. Big cats, although it's a bit depressing. Uh, great apes. Great apes. Yeah. Reptiles. You're right. Reptiles, yeah. Birds. Uh, <laughs> unless it's a big one that you think can oh, rip a, vulture, a dog apart. Yeah. A vulture you go, or an brilliant. Eagle, brilliant. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Owls are brilliant. But, yeah, owls great. But, but I've always wanted a little owl on my desk. I'd like to be doing work and there'd be a little owl there and I'd go, can you give me that pencil? And it just sort of goes over and gets me a pencil and goes, cheers, and it just watches me and it thinks I'm brilliant. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Not really, no. No? No, I've never had noticed to have any kind of animal sat on my desk. No, Carl? You'd like a little owl, wouldn't you, that helped you? No, I had a, I had a little magpie, didn't I? We've talked about that. Oh, he came down sure. and, uh, started pecking your grifter, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> what was his name? Maggie. Sure. Brilliant. Inspired. 
And it, you took it to school and it didn't come back didn't once, come did back, it? Didn't come mm. back, didn't see it again. Oh, dear. Did it ever peck, peck your head? Because mm. you used to have hair, didn't you? Mm. Yeah. No, it did. It started getting a bit violent. Really? Yeah. But, mate, was it becoming sort of of age when adolescence, probably sexual frustration sort? You know, because cause I think magpies go for shiny objects, don't they? And you were probably sort of... Yeah. Probably losing it a little bit then in the front, and so when the sun was out... There's a bit of a sheen on the front. <laughs> they saw glare and thought, I love that. Yeah. What is that? That's brilliant. Yeah. Or as it was sort of pecking away, it mistook it for a tree. <laughs> yeah, because of the noise. Because of the made. noise. Yeah, the hollow oh, sound. I squeezed his head, um, uh, yesterday. We should uh, just point out, if you're a new listener to, uh, X, you might not realise that one of, uh, Ricky's many sexual peccadilloes, I'm assuming it's a sexual thing, I can, can't justify it any other way, uh, is to just squeeze Carl's head. Yeah. Front wise, sideways. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's sexual or, you know, like when you've got a little kitten, you can't, you, oh, you want to squeeze his little face. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean by that, Carl? Yeah, yeah, a little I puppy said that. I said before, squeeze a little lad. Yeah, exactly, and I, I feel that with you, because it's sort of like, it gives so much. Look at Carl's face, he mm. gives so much. It's like he, it is like he can understand what we're saying. Yeah. And that's what the connection is, I think, between me and, and, and Carl and other animals. <laughs> it's like he can um, understand what we're saying. But I squeezed it yesterday, and Carl went, I definitely heard some crack. Yeah. Because I'm trying to see how hard I can squeeze it. Yeah, I think that was you just thinking, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair. I think the cogs just started to... <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I think there is a danger, because I think there is a danger that you could you could squeeze it too much. Yeah, I know. He did a good deed today, did, the other day, didn't you? Mm. Was it, yeah. What were you up to? You were just, uh, you were talking about, like, you know, being hassled in the street and stuff. Mm. And, uh, I get hassled a lot by the homeless. Uh, don't we all, don't we all? Um. <laughs> you, should go, you should go home to sleep. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm here, mate. But no, I, I, I do treat him a lot. You know, <laughs> treat them. I love that. You had a good day? Yeah. You've been good? Yeah. There you go. It's 50p. Yeah. Suzanne does the, uh, save the children thing. You were talking about, you know, charities hassling you all the time. Mm. She does that. Um, and I sort of say, well, you do that. I'll, uh, I'll look after You'll you. You'll take care of the homeless. I'll take care yeah. of the odd tramp around where I live. And how, and how do you treat them? Loads of different ways. 50p I might give them. Yeah. Or I might, I, I, you know, they'll sort of say, oh, have you got any money? I'll say, what for? And they'll go, I'm really thirsty. Mm. So I'll go, well, hang on a minute, and i nip and get them a little Diet Coke. Sure, a Diet it, Coke? Yeah, they they want to watch their weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're going full fat. Oh, what an insult. <laughs> yeah, exactly. to, a, to a man like me. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather treat them than... Because a lot of people spend spend money on, you know, problems abroad and stuff. Right. Oh, I just God. think, you know... Yeah, famine no, I'm, I'm just saying. Oh, God. Like what? What do you mean? Like, famine relief? Well, you do get sick of it, don't you? You know I mean, it's not. You get sick of no, it. No, I'm wait, just saying. Wait, go no, on. I'm just. I know. Just let let whatever you do now, Steve. Don't interrupt because I'm scared. But I just think it's it's worth it. Mm. It's, it's, there's yeah, so yeah. many issues. There's freedom of speech. Yeah. There's we're not responsible. Yeah. There's he'll get away with it because he's a buffoon. <laughs> yes. And it is entertaining. Exactly. So go so on. So all I'm saying is you're what? saying you know do a tr who do I give me money to? Is it is it you know little you know sick kids or whatever or is it old people or whatever? Mm. HMV. That's uh, money too. Deeply, they get a lot of it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And for me, I just get sick of, uh, you know, problems abroad. It's like, what do you do? What do you do with famine and that? What, what are you meant to do? How can you solve it? It's gone on for years. Yeah. And it just keeps going. We keep giving them money, they keep spending it. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no, you're not getting any return for your cash? Well, it's just how, how many times, you know, they've got to learn. What do you mean they've got, they've got to learn? To learn? <laughs> what, are you going to teach them a lesson? What, what do you mean they've got to learn? What do, what do you mean? Well, what are they doing with it? Yeah, they must have like a better interest accounts or something where, you know, look after, d get the, put the money in the right things. Sorry, do, do you think that Bob Galdorf sort of writes him a check? He goes over and he's in the helicopter and there's there's millions of them, and they go, it's Galdorf from Boomtown Rats. <laughs> Brilliant. Go, oh, oh, I hope if he, there's one man that can help us. Yeah, I hope he doesn't sing. He's, he's not going to sing. He's got some money for us. <laughs> and he comes down and he goes, they are. Do you want a check or do you take switch? They go, we don't take switch. He goes, there's a check. They. They he's, get he's things doing like it again, though, isn't he? As well, I mean, he? all right, you know, he used to work here, Bob. He's a lovely fella, and that. But yeah, he's a lovely man. But how many times can you save the world? You know, yeah. he's, he's he's over there again, helping out, and it's like, well, you know, what do you do? Are you saying don't bother because it keeps happening? Not for well. I'm not saying that. You know what I mean? I'm not daft. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what you're thinking. <laughs> and Carl, you are daft. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just I don't know what the answer is. Do you know what I mean? So oh. you're just saying, wash your hands of the whole affair, leave them to it. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Are you really just saying it's sort of it's nature, it's tough luck, just don't interfere, like a wildlife program? Is that what you're saying? 
Don't interfere. Are you basically just saying it's not my concern? This has got a bit heavy. Can we do Cheeky Freak of the Week? Let's play a record. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> my, my, hey, hey, out of the blue from uh, the album Russ Never Sleeps by Neil Young. Such a brilliant song. Oh, he's a great, great uh, musician. He's amazing. Yeah. He's incredible. I think we'll play a Neil Young track a week. Okay. From now until Christmas. Brilliant. Okay. All right. Excellent. On XFM 104.9, I'm looking to be Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. We were talking about the homeless. Um, I saw a homeless guy in the week as I was walking down Finchley Road, and he was peering in the window of one of the uh, uh, Dixons or something like that, just checking out the details on one of those cable TV packages. <laughs> and I thought, one step at a time. <laughs> I mean, if you, firstly, I don't know, start eating your dinner off a plate. Yeah. And then work your way up to, you know, house, a home, a widescreen yeah. TV, a roof. digital television. But uh, uh, it's all... D d d well, that, 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 that might answer one of the questions, because I, I keep getting recognised by homeless people, and mm. I never know what to say. I go, oh, is your, I, I think... Oh, uh, either they, they're not really homeless, and they've, you know, they, I don't know, they've got sort of digs or something, and they watch television, or the scariest one is that they... They've become homeless in the last few months sure, since yeah. the office. And I think, oh God, that's really scary. Or they are watching it in Dixon's. They're queuing up going, the office is on tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Uh, going down to Dixon's. Or they think you're one of them. Or that, well, I have. I mean, the way you dress. Well, no, uh, some that are probably not quite, yeah, got their faculties, uh, maybe a bit worse for wear, um, think they recognise me. And they, 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 old scenarios where they're going, remember we were chatting, I was going, yeah, yeah, how are you? How are you? And it's just they recognise someone. Right, yeah. But, but that, that's, yeah. That, that's a bit weird. But I mean, uh, I think that's the worst thing, homeless. I, 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 on a serious note, it is outside health. Well, yeah. we're, we're talking about charity, and I don't know, I, I, I sort of um, uh, got these standards where I've been sort of like caught in the street. But the ones that I'd choose, I'd always think, Charity is what touches you. You can't change the world, but you can change your bit. So cancer, obviously, because I'm mum. So I give to cancer. And I think outside health, the next one must be being homeless. Because there's nothing you can do. It's, yeah. it's got everything. It's, you're, you're scared, bewildered, you're cold, hungry. It's just, 